सी आई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स फॉर क्लास एट दिस इज चैप्टर फिफ्टीन इंट्रोडक्शन टू ग्राफ्स फ्रॉम पेज नंबर टू थर्टी वन टू पेज नंबर टू फोर्टी एट पेज नंबर टू फोर्टी फिफ्टीन पॉइंट टू लिनियर ग्राफ A line graph consists of bits of line segments joined consecutively. Sometimes the graph may be a whole unbroken line. Such a graph is called a linear graph. To draw such a line, we need to locate some points on the graph sheet. We will now learn how to locate points conveniently on a graph sheet. Fifteen point two point one, location of a point the teacher put a point on the blackboard we can observe this in an image here she asked the students how they would describe its location there were several responses you can observe them in figure 15.9 one student says the dot is in the upper half of the board another says the dot is near the left edge of the board another says the dot is very close to the left upper corner of board can any one of these statements help fix the position of the dot no why not think about it john then gave a suggestion he measured the distance of the dot from the left edge of the board and said the dot is 90 cm from the left edge of the board Do you think John's suggestion is really helpful? Figure fifteen point one zero. In this figure, we have multiple dots, a, a one, a two, a three. All are ninety centimeter away from the left edge. Figure fifteen point one one. Here we also have dots a, a one, a two, a three. A is ninety centimeter from left edge and one sixty centimeter from the bottom edge. Page number two forty one. Rekha then came up with a modified statement. The dot is ninety centimeter from the left edge and one sixty centimeter from the bottom edge. That solved the problem completely. You can observe this in figure fifteen point one one. The teacher said. we describe the position of this dot by writing it as 90 comma 160 within brackets will the point 160 comma 90 within brackets be different from 90 comma 160 within brackets think about it the 17th century mathematician rene descartes it is said noticed the movement of an insect near a corner of the ceiling and began to think of determining the position of a given point in a plane his system of fixing a point with the help of two measurements vertical and horizontal came to be known as cartesian system in his honor 15.2.2 coordinates suppose you go to an auditorium and search for your reserved seat you need to know two numbers the row number and the seat number this is the basic method for fixing a point in a plane observe in figure 15.12 how the point 3,4 which is 3 units from the left edge and 4 units from the bottom edge is plotted on a graph sheet the graph sheet itself is a square grid we draw the x and y axis conveniently and then fix the required point 3 is called the x coordinate of the point 4 is y coordinate of the point we say that the coordinates of the point are 3 comma 4 within brackets figure 15.12 here we have a graph on the x axis we have values from 0 to 6 at an interval of 1 the same is true for the y axis A point three comma four has been marked. 
It is 4 units from the y axis and 3 units from the x axis. 4 tells how many units to move up, 3 tells how many units to move to the right. In this graph, we also have the point O, which is the origin or 0, 0. Example 3 Plot the point 4,3 on a graph sheet. Is it the same as the point 3,4? Solution Locate the x, y axis. They are actually number lines. Start at O, which is 0, 0. Move 4 units to the left. Then move 3 units up. You reach the point 4,3. From figure 15.13, you can observe that the points 3,4 and 4,3 are two different points. Figure 15.13 Here we have the point 3,4 we marked in the previous graph and 4,3. 4,3 is a point which is 3 units away from the x-axis and 4 units away from the y-axis. Example 4 From figure 15.14, choose the letters that indicate the location of the points given below. 1, 2,1, 2, 0, 0,5, 3, 2,0. 0. Also write 4, the coordinates of A, 5, the coordinates of F. Figure 15.14 Here we have a graph with O as origin and points 0 to 7 on x-axis and 0 to 6 on the y-axis. The points A, B, C, D, E, F, G have been plotted on the graph. Page number 242 Solution 1. 2,1 2, is the point E. It is not D. 2. 0, 0,5 is the point B. Why? Discuss with your friends. 3. 2,0 2, is the point G. 4. Point A is 4,5. 5. F is 5.5,0. 5, Example 5. Plot the following points and verify if they lie on a line. If they lie on a line, name it. 1, 0, 0,2, 0, 0,5, 0, 0,6, 0, 0,3.5. 2, A, 1,1, B, 1,2, C, 1,3, D, 1,4. 3, K, 1,3, L, 2,3, M, 3,3 N 4,3 4 W 2,6 X 3,5 Y 5,3 Z 6,2 Solution 1. Here we have a graph with X and Y axis. O is the origin. There are 7 points at interval of 1 on x-axis and the same is true for the y-axis. Few points have been marked here. 0, 0,2, 0, 0,3.5, 0, 0,5, 0, 0,6. These lie on a line. The line is y-axis. 2. We have the same graph here with x and y axis. Now, we have the following points marked here. A, 1,1 B, 1,2 C, 1,3 D, 1,4 These lie on a line. The line is AD. You may also use other ways of naming it. It is parallel to the y axis. 3. We have a graph with X and Y axis. O is the origin. Six points are marked on X axis and same is true for Y axis. They are all at an interval of 1. K, 1,3. 1, 
L 2,3, M 3,3, N 4,3 have been marked on this graph. These lie on a line. We can name it as KL or KM or MN etc. It is parallel to x-axis. 4. Here we have a similar graph as the last one. On this graph, the following points have been marked. W 2,6 X 3,5 Y 5,3 Z 6,2 These lie on a line. We can name it as XY or WY or YZ etc. Note that in each of the above cases, graph obtained by joining the plotted points is a line. Such graphs are called linear graphs. Page number 243. Exercise 15.2. 1. Plot the following points on a graph sheet. Verify if they lie on a line. A. A 4,0. B 4,2 C 4,6 D 4,2.5 B B 1,1 Q 2,2 R 3,3 S 4,4 C K 2,3 L 5,3 M 5,5 N 2,5 2. Draw the line passing through 2,3 and 3,2. Find the coordinates of the points at which this line meets the x-axis and y-axis. 3. Write the coordinates of the vertices of each of these adjoining figures. 4. State whether true or false. Correct. That are false. 1. A point whose x coordinate is 0 and y coordinate is non zero will lie on the y axis. 2. A point whose y coordinate is 0 and x coordinate is 5 will lie on y axis. 3. The coordinates of the origin are 0, 0. Here we have a graph. There is O which is the origin. 10 points on x-axis at intervals of 1, 8 points on y-axis at intervals of 1. There is a rectangle here which is AOCB. Also, we can observe a parallelogram in the graph which is PQRS. Also, there is a triangle KLM. 15.3 some applications. In everyday life, you might have observed that more you use a facility, the more you pay for it. If more electricity is consumed, the bill is bound to be high. If less electricity is used, then the bill will be easily manageable. This is an instance where one quantity affects another. Amount of electric bill depends on the quantity of electricity used. We say, that the quantity of electricity is an independent variable or sometimes control variable and the amount of electric bill is the dependent variable. The relation between such variables can be shown through a graph. Think, discuss and write. The number of litres of petrol you buy to fill a car's petrol tank will decide the amount you have to pay, which is the independent variable here. Think about it. Example 6. Quantity and Cost The following table gives the quantity of petrol and its cost. Here we have a table with two rows. In the first row we have number of litres of petrol. In second row we have cost of petrol in rupees. 10 litres, 500 rupees. 15 litres, 750 rupees. 20 litres, 1000 rupees, 25 litres, 1250 rupees. Plot a graph to show the data. Page number 244. Solution 1. 
Let us take a suitable scale on both the axes. You can observe this in figure 15.16. Here, we have a graph. The x-axis represents litres from 0 to 30 at intervals of 5. Y-axis represents cost in rupees from 0 to 1300 at intervals of 100. There is a straight line originating from the origin which divides the graph in two parts. Also, there's a point P on this line. This point is 10,500. We can see a man walking on the line that connects P and 500 and a man climbing the line that connects the x-axis and the point P. You can also observe the points 15,750, 20,000 and 25,250 on this line. 2. Mark number of litres along the horizontal axis. 3. Mark cost of petrol using the vertical axis. 4. Plot the points 10,500, 15,750, 20,100, 25,1250. 5. Join the points. We find that the graph is a line. It is a linear graph. Why does this graph pass through the origin? Think about it. The graph can help us to estimate a few things. Suppose we want to find the amount needed to buy 12 litres of petrol. Locate 12 on the horizontal axis. Follow the vertical line through 12 till you meet the graph at P. Say, from P, you take a horizontal line to meet the vertical axis. This meeting point provides the answer. This is the graph of a situation in which two quantities are in direct variation. How? In such situations, the graphs will always be linear. Try these. In the above example, use the graph to find how much petrol can be purchased for rupees 800. Page number 245. Example 7 Principal and Simple Interest. A bank gives 10% simple interest or SI on deposits by senior citizens. Draw a graph to illustrate the relation between the sum deposited and the simple interest earned. Find from your graph A. The annual interest obtainable for investment of Rs. 250. B. The investment one has to make to get an annual simple interest of Rs. 70. Solution. Here we have a table with two columns. Column 1 is sum deposited. Column 2 is simple interest for a year. Sum deposited, 100. Simple interest, 100 into 1 into 10 divided by 100 is equal to 10 rupees. Rupees 200. 200 into 1 into 10 divided by 100 is equal to 20 rupees. 300. 300 into 1 into 10 divided by 100 is equal to rupees 30. Rupees 500. 500 into 1 into 10 divided by 100 is equal to rupees 50. Rupees 1000. Rupees 100. Steps to follow. Find the quantities to be plotted as deposit and SI. 2. Decide the quantities to be taken on x-axis and on y-axis. 3. Choose a scale. 4. Plot points. 5. Join the points. We get a table of values. In this table, we have two rows. First is deposit in rupees. Second is annual SI in rupees. When deposit is 100, SI is 10. For 200, it is 20. For 300, it is 30. For 500, it is 50. For 1000, it is 100. 1. Scale. 1 unit is equal to rupees 100 on horizontal axis. 1 unit is equal to rupees 10 on vertical axis. 2. Mark deposits along horizontal axis. 3. Mark 
simple interest along vertical axis. 4. Plot the points 100, 10, 200, 20, 300, 30, 500, 50, etc. 5. Join the points. We get a graph that is a line. You can observe this in figure 15.17. A. Corresponding to rupees 250 on horizontal axis, we get the interest to be rupees 25 on vertical axis. B. Corresponding to rupees 70 on the vertical axis, we get the sum to be 700 rupees on the horizontal axis. Try these. Is example 7 a case of direct variation? Page number 246. Figure 15.17. Here we have a graph. On the x axis, we have deposits in rupees from 0 to 1000 at intervals of 100. On the y axis, we have annual simple interest in rupees from 0 to 100 at intervals of 10. There is a straight line originating from the origin which divides the graph into two equal parts. There are few points marked on this line 100, 0, 200, 20, 300, 30, 500, 50, and 1000, There is a square which is formed with a dotted line from 70 on the y-axis to line and 700 on x-axis to the line. There is a smaller square which has also been formed from 25 on the y-axis to the line and 250 on the x-axis to the line. Example 8. Time and distance. Ajit can ride a scooter constantly at a speed of 30 km per hour. Draw a time-distance graph for this situation, use it to find 1. The time taken by Ajit to ride 75 km 2. The distance covered by Ajit in 3.5 hours Solution Here we have a table with two columns. Column 1 represents hours of ride. Column 2 represents distance covered. 1 hour, 30 km 2 hours 2 into 30 km is equal to 60 km. 3 hours. 3 into 30 km is equal to 90 km. 4 hours. 4 into 30 km is equal to 120 km and so on. We get a table of values. In this table, we have two rows, time in hours and distance covered in km. When time is 1, distance is 30. For 2, it is 60, for 3 it is 90, for 4 it is 120. 1. Scale Observe figure 15.18. Horizontal, 2 units is equal to 1 hour. Vertical, 1 unit is equal to 10 km. 2. Mark time on horizontal axis. 3. Mark distance on vertical axis. 4. Plot the points. 1,30, Page number 247. 5. Join the points. We get a linear graph. A. Corresponding to 75 km on the vertical axis, we get the time to be 2.5 hours on the horizontal axis. Thus, 2.5 hours are needed to cover 75 km. B. Corresponding to 3.5 hours on the horizontal axis, the distance covered is 105 km on the vertical axis. Figure 15.18 Here we have a graph. On the x-axis, we have time in hours from 0 to 5 at interval of 1. On the y-axis, we have distance covered in km from 0 to 130 at an interval of 10. There is a line originating from the origin which divides the graph into two equal parts. The points on this line are 1,30, 2,60, 3,90, 4,120. 
a rectangle is formed when you join the point 75 on y axis to this line and the point 2.5 on x axis to this line. Similarly, a larger rectangle is formed when you join the points 3.5 on x axis to this line and 105 on the y axis to this line. Exercise 15.3 1. Draw the graphs of the following tables of values with suitable scales on the axis. A. Cost of apples Here, we have two rows. In the first row, we have number of apples. In the second row, we have cost in rupees. When the number of apples is 1, the cost is 5 rupees. For 2, it is 10. For 3, it is 15. For 4, it is 20. For 5, it is 25. B. Distance travelled by a car. Here we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have time in hours. In the second row, we have distances in kilometer. When the time is 6 a.m., distance is 40. 7 a.m., it is 80. 8 a.m., it is 120. 9 a.m., it is 160. Page number 248. 1. How much distance did the car cover during the period 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m.? 2. What was the time when the car had covered a distance of 100 km since its start? C. Interest on deposits for a year. Here we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have deposit in rupees. In the second row, we have simple interest in rupees. When deposit is 1000, simple interest is 80. For 2000, it is 160. For 3000, it is 240. For 4000, it is 320. For 5000, it is 400. 1. Does the graph pass through the origin? 2. Use the graph to find the interest on rupees 2500 for a year. 3. To get an interest of rupees 280 per year, how much money should be deposited? 2. Draw a graph for the following. 1. Here we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have side of square in centimeter. In second row, we have perimeter in centimeter. When the side is 2, perimeter is 8. For 3, it is 12. For 3.5, it is 14. For 5, it is 20. For 6, it is 24. Is it a linear graph? 2. Here, we have a table with two rows. In the first row, we have side of square in centimeter. In the second row, we have area in centimeter square. When the side is 2, area is 4. For 3, it is 9. For 4, it is 16. For 5, it is 25. For 6, it is 36. Is it a linear graph? What have we discussed? 1. Graphical presentation of data is easier to understand. 2. 1. A bar graph is used to show comparison among categories. 2. A pie graph is used to compare parts of a whole. 3. A histogram is a bar graph that shows data in intervals. 3. A line graph displays data that changes continuously over periods of time. 4. A line graph, which is a whole unbroken line, is called a linear graph. 5. For fixing a point on the graph sheet, we need x coordinate and y coordinate. 6. The relation between dependent variable and independent variable is shown through a graph. This chapter ends here. You were just listening to the audiobook Mathematics for Class 8. Program Coordinator Dr. Rajesh Kumar Nimesh Narrator Akash Ahuja Technical Coordinator 
Batilang Lingdu. Sound recordist Vikas Sangwan. Assistance in production Ruchi Sharma. Directed and produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary. And this program is presented to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.